Hello everyone, this is Michael Mirdad and we're sharing our Friday Night Spiritual Insights with Michael Mirdad. This is our presentation. Today what we're going to talk about is something that's on a lot of people's minds, but currently, as in, in, to various degrees, we go through changes, obviously, every day in our lives. But right now there's a lot of major changes going on in the world and in people's lives. And what I like to do is look at the deeper meaning to things. If there's a lot of endings, which there are, a lot of endings going on, jobs, finances then as a result of the jobs, but finances, health issues and so on, social issues, um, all kinds of things going on. But when you see a lot of changes on the outside, those are called symptoms. So try not to react to symptoms. Try to look for the greater roots of issues. And so although the world right now might be calling you and, you know, flashing images, whether it's on the news or in your mind, flashing images of what to do and not do and so on and so on, it's very dramatic. We're not supposed to be creatures of drama. We're supposed to be creatures of centeredness, reflections of being creations of God. And instead, people have forgotten who they are and then they start reacting to life. So instead, think of the importance of clarity versus distortion. So today we're talking about clarity versus distortion, or clutter, if you'd like to call it that. <clears throat> our job and our right is to find, teach, feel, experience, share clarity. Distortions are not our inheritance. They're not our destiny. These are man-made issues that man likes to wallow in. It's, it's like a self-imposed hell, in a sense. You know, you've seen pictures like in, in some of the Doré uh, drawings, carvings in, in the books, um, the Divine Comedy, you know, like about Dante's Inferno. And Dante's describing, but Doré, the uh, artist, is, is um, illustrating this this thing, you know, this, this concept of like being in hell. But if you look carefully, read carefully, it's often really depicting stuff that's going on in people's minds. It's, it's the same as what goes on in our minds. It shows you, you know, hell and all this people gnawing and grabbing and clutching. That's exactly what it's like to be on earth. All it is is a magnified version of it. So many mystics have said that life on earth is already living hell. So it's not our destiny to be here this way. It's our destiny to, to release this place, to free this place, to bring something different, share something different, offer something different to each other. So choosing clarity is not something, even though it's our inheritance, what we've gotten used to doing, even addicted to doing, is grasping onto, clutching onto distortion rather than clarity. So people are now um, stuck in that distortion where they're, they're insisting on looking through those eyes. Let thine eye be single. Learn to see through this eye, the one of the divine mind that says, you know, and it's kind of funny, it doesn't mean you're like in la-la land. It, it means you see, feel, experience things differently than others, but it also means you bring a different world to others. If love is what's in my eye, one of the meanings of let thine eye be single, it means let your focus be single instead of conflicted. If you feel conflicted inside, you're going to manifest duality and conflict on the outside. So whether it's uh, some karmic thing or childhood thing, wounds of the past, unhealed stuff, resentment, all of those feed this inner conflict that then will manifest or appear as distortions in our life, in our appear, appear, appeared world, you know, the world of manifestation. But manifestation is like, more accurately, like the word infestation, which I've shared in various talks here and there, but mankind has infested this world because of their ego. We've allowed ego to take precedence instead of, instead of spirit. Spirit sees clearly, ego distorts. 
as it naturally would because the ego is a software program in our minds that is subtitled distortion. It's a distorted view of everything. The ego can't let you see clearly because you would release the ego then. The ego has to keep us seeing distortion so that we would still rely on its viewpoints as our guide. And God's saying, just let go, let God. We can't. We got to watch out for this and defend that. We got to speak up. We got to fight for our rights. What rights? You're a divine being. What do you have to fight over? Well, but other people don't let me live my rights. How is fighting it going to fix it? Oh, you mean fix it on the outside through, through law or behavior, or whatever. That doesn't fix it. You can imprison people and make them behave a certain way. That doesn't mean they actually like you anymore. Do you want to be loved? Do you want to see as, as be seen as a divine being? You have to start living and acting like a divine being. I understand all the logic about fighting for rights. I'm saying it doesn't bring you what you think it would bring you. And the conversation here is not about that extreme stuff. It's about how we choose between clarity and distortion. Practice clarity in every area of your life. You might want to take an inventory and say, are there areas of my life that are distorted? If so, what are those areas? Are there areas? Let me check. Um, do I see, feel, perceive, experience peace and love in work? Then you might not be in, this, in the right work. In your relationship, then you might not be in the right relationship. In the same, in the town you live in, then maybe you're not in the right town. Now, the examples I gave are just very vivid. They're very clear. Why? Because they're clarity oriented instead of distortion oriented. But nevertheless, I want to say that even though they're clear, vivid examples, they're not exactly perfect because I don't want to give the impression that you have to move to the right place to marry the right person to have your peace and happiness. It's an internal experience. It's a choice we have to make first is to say to, say to ourselves, I, I actually own and accept that the choices I have made to get me into a conflicted relationship or job or region I live in, that I need to own so I can say goodbye to it. In other words, instead of it just being a, 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 a geographic shift, I'm shifting something inside. I'm choosing clarity. Now, remember, just because though I choose internal doesn't mean I don't get to have external. The, the point is that external doesn't necessarily bring you internal. You find internal clarity first. If you don't choose internal clarity, you are actively choosing internal distortion. You can say, well, I don't remember choosing. If you're not choosing, actively choosing clarity, God, peace, love, etc., then you are, even with no choice, choosing distortion because one, the universe abhors a vacuum. It's going to have one or the other. Clarity, 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 not there. Distortion naturally fills that void. And it fills it, especially since people are addicted to it because people live in fear. And the ego, once it sees that you're afraid, it is given rights by a fearful person, i.e. you, to put anything it wants into the mind. So it puts all these distorted views of what you need to watch out for, defend against, and so on. Um, so the internal change will bring the external clarity. And when I say external, I'm talking about even your health, for that matter. But internal, in the consciousness, deeper than the body, in the consciousness, we choose clarity. How? Well, first of all, anything that doesn't feel clear, practice forgiveness. Second of all, even when you see a lack of clarity and you've practiced forgiveness and something's still not quite right, Practice gratitude for all the things that did feel right, all the things, all the times you did have epiphanies and insights, um, relations or comments people have made that were very kind. In other words, give thanks for all forms of goodness. So forgive that what doesn't feel good, that which doesn't feel good. Give thanks for that that has ever felt good. That's going to increase your clarity level. Other than those two pieces, those two principles, concepts, practices, other than those two, extra things to remember. One of them, make it so. Live it. Choose clarity, not just on the inside. 
Now also practice it outside in your conversations. Humans live in a constant Mercury retrograde, even though Mercury as a planet only goes retro every so often, so every so many weeks. People can say, oh, Mer Mercury's not retrograde anymore, and they don't realize it. They're still in it because humans suck at communication, meaning a lack of clarity. Honest, love-based, always love-based, loving and tactful, and clear. You order food at a restaurant. Did you tell them that you didn't want such and such in your food? Well, no. Then that's why it's in there. Well, I'm mad because I, I don't like when they put it in. The other restaurants don't put it. That's not the point. Blaming doesn't release you from responsibility. The bottom line is you forgot to tell them. It's a drag. Offer to pay for a fresh batch. And even if they say that's not necessary, you offered, and that's kind. That's clarity. Kindness and clarity are from the same root of consciousness. Be clear, clear about what you want in your life. Something I shared earlier just today, in fact, in our uh, Zoom, uh, we have a daily Zoom group. And um, one thing I shared right there was the ABCs of relationship. Long story short, you and I are going to have a relationship, whether it's as friends, lovers, or whatever we are, family members, whatever we are to each other. But the point is, when you have a relationship with somebody, it's like saying, here's a whole alphabet, A to Z. We're going to start with A and say, here's A relationship. After A, sky's the limit. If we're going to have a relationship at all, any other alphabet pieces you want in there, any other letters, what do you want to have? Uh, um, B, boundaries, um, P, passion, any letter that represents anything in our relationship. C, cooperation, communication, and so on. All the letters, decide what letters you want to put on the table. Hi, you know what? We're really hitting it off. Uh, I would like to propose this letter, this letter. And here's what they mean to me. And you say, hmm, no, I'm not really interested in those letters. No, okay. Instead of how dare you, I hate you, please pretend you're interested. Just clarity. No, but, but I, this letter is interesting. Oh, yeah, that one's not really my thing. How about this one? Yeah, yeah, really? Okay, so M for movies. So let's watch movies. Let's, let's go to the theater together or whatever, you know, because we're interested. This is some similar topic. Just share what works and enjoy and give thanks for it. Instead of guilting and shaming and wanting something that isn't being offered. Humans, they're just so challenged with the word responsibility that they are not likely going to have a clear life. You won't have clarity if you don't know how to take responsibility. In a way, clarity comes from, it's like one of the perks and gifts of being a responsible human being who knows what they want, what they don't want, communicates it clearly, you know, and all that afterwards. But you know what you want and don't want. You're, you're, you're taking responsibility. And if something is going on that you don't want, like somebody put a letter out there, a letter of the alphabet out there that they want in the relationship and you don't, but you did it, you, you own that. And you say, you know, that, yeah, that was my bet. Let me just take that letter back. That's not in the, in the uh, mix anymore. It's okay. Being so clear. Tell the restaurant what you want and what you don't want in your food. Tell people what you want and what you don't want. And if it works for them, great. If, it does, if the restaurant says to you, we, we actually can't do that. I've been to restaurants. I, I don't restaurant a lot, but it, my food's always the same. Tortilla and cheese butter, something simple like that. But uh, I went to one place. This was bizarre, um, seemingly, to all of us, to all of our shock. But it was a Mexican restaurant. And all I ever get is nachos, just chips and cheese. And they said, we are authentic Mexican restaurant. We don't do nachos, you know, whatever, you know. They were very fussy about it, like offended. Hmm. Now I get to decide. I put a letter on the table. Here's what I would like. They said, we don't have that. Wow. Now I get to decide. Find a different letter that they can meet or leave. And uh, I don't remember uh, whether we stayed or left, but I think we left. Partly because of the attitude and partly because eh, we're not, you know, we're, it's not like we hate you. We're just like, okay, never mind. We'll, we'll go somewhere else. It's just so simple. 
And some people will get offended when you're that clear, but you don't mean offensively, right? You don't mean it offensively. You want to be just clear. Um, I arrived really late once uh, to a bed and breakfast in Scotland, and it was arranged that we would have dinner. Um, and um, this is in far north parts of Scotland. Uh, and um, dinner, and you know, it was a long drive, took forever to get there, and we got there probably an hour or two late from the standard dinner time, and they refused to feed us. I mean, this was a long day, and a really, you know, you really want to eat, need to eat, some of the people especially. And um, they were like, no, no, you know, you're late, so if we give you anything, it'll just be this and that. And we said, you know, and our tour guy, the driver and all that, he's like, oh, what are we going to do? All worried. I said, let's leave. Just tell them, oh, we understand. Thank you. We'll check out. You can um, refund our money, and we'll just leave, you know, and... You know, clarity like that is also brilliant because it really tests situations and, and brings the light to the situations. So they're like, rah, 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 and then fine, we'll get you food. See how that worked out? Isn't that nice? Clear instead of victim, clear. Clear and victim are also opposites because victim is part of the distortion of life. You're not a victim. You're a holy child of God. And if you ever look different, then something's distorted and it's coming from distorted beliefs about yourself or others. So we work on it. We heal it. We forgive. We practice the forgiveness and the principles of how to get back to clarity. So please consider this in your own life. This, this download of, you know, uh, vitamin pack downloads here, you know, uh, concentrated nutrients of, of information in one little sharing talk. But there's so much here. If, you, if you're listening carefully, let it make a difference in your life. Um, and also, I'm well aware that one talk could give you one bit, another talk, another bit, and then it adds up and the light bulb goes off and you go, oh my God, I'm actually deserving. And then it's kind of cool when that comes together. So thank you for your time. Join us anytime. We do these, we do these Friday at uh, 5.30. Um, every every Friday at 5.30 we do these talks and then we have five o'clock workshops or classes on usually on Wednesdays every every month, every week, every year. Um, if you're interested in deeper classes, they're in the evenings at five o'clock. All uh, Arizona time. And um, we also have Sunday services, sacred Sunday services every Sunday Arizona time um, at uh, 10 o'clock. So you're welcome to join us for that as well. If you're interested in anything more, I have hundreds of free CDs, DVDs, or, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, what do they call them? Videos on YouTube. All those kinds of video presentations, hundreds of them you can watch for free. So God bless you and thank you for your commitment to clarity. You must have that commitment to some level to be watching this. All right? So thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.